Good morning, family and friends. I welcome you into this space, which is made sacred in the season of loss. With the spirit of love and friendship you bring as we gather together to remember David Sanderson. You come together as family and friends from near and far, neighbors, fellow church members, all of us co-creators of a community that includes those present and those who could not be here today. We come together that we may honor David in our hearts and hold him dear in our memory. In this time we share today, we come to remember a wonderful, extraordinary man and to celebrate his life. We come also to mourn and to say goodbye. We come first to remember Dave, to remember him as he was long ago, as he was just a few days ago. To remember him in his times of strength and in his times of need, to remember him in his moments of joy and in his moments of sadness and frustration to remember him as he was, no more, no less. We come also to mourn, to mourn the silent empty spaces once filled with David's generous smiles, his gravelly voice, his odd sense of humor, his incredible resilience, and to mourn the loss of his physical presence, the loss of love growing into tomorrow. But most of all, we come today to invite David's presence with us and to celebrate his life. Each of you comes here with your own memories of David, for he was not the same person to any two of you, nor was he the same throughout his years, for he grew and changed as we all do. We bring images of a man who touched lives, images of his face, his contagious laughter, his drive and creativity, his determination and his uncanny talent for staying the course. These we bring into our common gathering that our loss may be eased by the balm of love and memory. James, Marilyn, Jeffrey, family and friends, the more we love in this world and share life's affections, 
the more tender we become. The deeper our feelings of attachment and commitment have taken root, the more we are vulnerable to the loss of a loved one, whether or not it is expected or timely. There is no evading this unbending law. Just as surely we are grateful that love joins our hearts in lasting bonds of affection that reach into and beyond the grave. It is one of life's most precious gifts to love and to be loved, to share life with another in the sustaining, reassuring ties of love and affection. It was your good fortune, it was our good fortune, to be bound up in this life with David Sanderson and to share his good life. From those bonds and from your many memories of rich moments in time with him, may we find comfort into the future. It is a profound honor and a deep source of joy to be here with you this morning as we come together to mourn Dave's untimely death and to celebrate the life of this exceptional man. In his long and active life, Dave touched many of us. His lively curiosity, his authenticity, his genuine interest in other people, his generous nature, these will be especially remembered and cherished. We gather as family and friends to remember and celebrate David's life. This memorial service, though, is also a service of thanksgiving. Here you are invited to give thanks for having known Dave, to recall the ways in which he touched your life, and to lift up the spirit which he embodied. As most of you know, Dave was nothing if not a planner. So it will not come as a surprise that Dave had a big hand in shaping our service this morning. The hymn we sing and the songs that we share were all chosen by David. So please join now in singing in the garden, which you will find printed on an insert in your program.
Psalm 42. As a deer longs for our flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me continually, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I went with the throng and led them in procession to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of thanksgiving, a multitude-keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. My soul is cast down within me. Therefore I remember you from the land of Jordan and of Hermon, from Mount Mazar. Deep calls to deep at the thunder of your cataracts. All your waves and your billows have gone over me. By day the Lord commands his steadfast love, and by night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I walk about mournfully because the enemy oppresses me? As with a deadly wound in my body, my adversaries taunt me, while they say to me continually, where is your God? Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. Good morning. Um, me and my family have known David for oh, a good dozen years or so, maybe more. Um, and at this time, I would like to share with you my um, thoughts on David's many talents. And as uh, um, as you know, he had many, and maybe to each of us, he's exhibited different ones. Um, but I like to focus on three that I thought were exceptional. Um, David had a true gift for languages. Uh, at one time, we were uh, standing together. I think it was election day, and we were standing um, right next to uh, uh, Kennedy Middle School, uh, where Bill Fowler was getting elected for the first time. And uh, David, uh, 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 I turned away for a second and turned back and noticed that David was speaking fluently in French to a couple that was passing by. I had no idea that David was fluent in French and after the conversation was over, I <laughs> expressed my uh, incredulity and uh, he very matter-of-factly uh, explained to me that when he was younger, he, uh, uh, he learned French in, his, in school and has never forgotten. Um, he also has learned just enough uh, Chinese to be able to uh, converse with a, uh, a waiter in Asia, Asia Walk, his favorite restaurant, from time to time, and just enough Russian for me to be dangerous and uh, elicit a laugh from, from my mom, with whom we always uh, went out to lunch um, many times. So that was quite exceptional. The other thing that I always marveled at with David is that he had a, a near photographic memory. It only took one time for you to say your phone number, or anyone else's phone number for that matter, <laughs> that it was immediately committed to memory forever. And of course, from time to time, was misused, all in good spirit, by many phone calls to brief you on many things that are happening around town or around your neighborhood. And finally, probably the most uh, importantly, David had an amazing talent for, for politics. In a different lifetime, he would have made a formidable politician and would have his opponents shake in their boots <laughs> as he went to win many offices. So he has been noted for this throughout his life here in Waltham, certainly, and was commended um, a number of times by the Democratic Party for his uh, involvement 
and effort on behalf of many candidates um, that went to become uh, uh, city council members, uh, mayors, uh, state senators, uh, and, and the like. In fact, if you're a politician and you were in Waltham, it would uh, really pay off if David was on your side. <laughs> because he alone delivered uh, many votes in your, uh, in, 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 on voting day by incessant calling, cajoling, uh, sign placement in people's backyards, bumper stickers, and uh, generally being a, uh, an anvil of politics around this town. Um, a few months ago, David and I were uh, driving around town, and he said, uh, Dimitri, I want you to do something special at my, uh, at my memorial service. I think he had a conversation with Reverend Mark and it was fresh in his mind. And I said, do you want me to cook something? Is it going to be shepherd's pie or baked chicken? What do you want, big guy? And he said, no, I want you to do something really special. And I said, what is it? He said, I want you to read a poem. And I said, okay, um, I never knew you to be I know, a lover of poetry. What kind of poem would you like for me to read? And he said, thought for a while and he said, a really good one. <laughs> So that was made it kind of hard. <laughs> but I think I've chosen the one that he would approve of. And as, um, as, I, as I read it, I, I, would, uh, I would keep in mind that, um, that David uh, was always full of hope. When things were going well, he was full of hope. And things were not going well, he was always full of hope. And hope, uh, surprisingly, always found him and never, never gave up on him uh, throughout his life. So as he listens from above, I imagine him in a great big Asia walk restaurant in the sky, and he's, the food is always free, the seating is always plentiful, and there's only one thing on the menu, B6. And for those of you, for you who don't know, down on Main Street, Asia walk, just grand reopening, B6 has everything. <laughs> and I mean that. So here, here comes the point. And it's, it's by Emily Dickinson, okay, and it's called Hope is the Thing with Feathers. Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without words and never stops at all. And sweetest in the gale is heard and sore must be the storm that could abash the little bird that kept so many warm. I've heard it in the chillest land and on the strangest sea, yet never an extremity it asked a crumb of me. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sue Adams. I was really touched when Dave told me that he had asked for me to be in his memorial service and to say a few words. Oh, what a, what a uh, charge. So I'm a member of this congregation and I became a friend of Dave's uh, probably more years ago than Dimitri, I think, um, back when he was living on Church Street, just around the corner here. There were a few of us, actually there were a lot of us, who were cleaning out the church basement downstairs to uh, open it up for some other uses, and we discovered, of course, that the church basement had become everybody's favorite storage place, so it was full of furniture and junk and art and junk and all that sort of thing. So we were putting together a yard sale, and Dave serendipitously wandered into the middle of this preparation and discovered an entire community of people he hadn't met yet. And before he knew it and we knew it, we were all in Dave's family. Um, he was never shy. He became this church's, one of this church's greatest boosters and principal greeters. He was at the door, he welcomed new people. He would turn to me and say, Sue, who's that, who's that over there? I don't, I don't know them. <laughs> that was only to last for about three seconds and he knew them. <laughs> so. So before I knew it, after, at that yard sale, I became uh, part of Dave's whirlwind. He faithfully came to church. He sat in the second pew right under the, uh, right under the pulpit. Um, we exchanged phone numbers. 
and I became part of his huge circle of phone pals. It was a, it was a long time before I realized that I wasn't the only person he called. <laughs> He joined my family for Easter lunches. He adopted my grandsons as his adopted nephews. He liked riding up the Charles River back when we kept a little funky little motorboat and, uh, and we would take him on trips up the river. Um, we had many lunches. We had many runs to Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, I ate at the 99. I ate at the Arcadia restaurant more times than I would have thought possible. I learned about his family, you folks, and his friends and his childhood interests. I certainly found myself, I was introduced, I think, after many years of living in Waltham, I was introduced to Waltham politics by David. Uh, I found out about his friendship with his, the police from the day when he called me from the road and he said, hey, Sue, guess where I am? And I said, no idea. And he said, I'm right outside your house in a police car. Wait a sec, I'll get the lights and the siren going. <laughs> David became my teacher. And I think this is the part of David that I would like to remember today. And I've mentioned it to a couple of people in the last couple of days while I tried to really figure out what I was going to say here. Um, Soon after we met, maybe that first year or so, Dave asked me to be his mentor in a program to help disabled people become better self-advocates. The group met at the Brandeis campus for several months. People from very, uh, varying degrees of ability and, and limitations participated, and each person had a mentor, and many of the mentors came from the SEIU, the um, Service Workers Union. Um, I wanted to, uh, I think during this time, uh, Dave and this program opened my eyes to see the people who, who, who live within bodies that are misshapen or who have diminished vision or have intellectual deficits or who struggle to communicate with tongues that don't behave properly. All of these people were struggling to be seen as human beings in a world that rushed past them. There were some people in the program who lived at the Fernald School, and I remember especially a woman who was very elegantly, but with great difficulty, spoke about her struggles to make herself heard. I was suddenly aware of my own bias toward profoundly disabled people, how easily I had dismissed people. Um, as people who needed to be cared for, whose physical needs had to be managed, but whose interior selves, whose interior lives I knew nothing about or didn't even imagine existed. It was a real epiphany, and my experience with David forever, always, in that particular time, really opened my eyes to the humanness of all of us. It was, I'll be forever grateful to him for this. David was a force of nature, I don't think anybody would deny that. To say that he was gregarious doesn't begin to describe him. He was the quintessential self-advocate. He could have taught that course. <laughs> he loved a party, he, especially a party where he was the lucky celebrant. And I have to believe he was, he's in this room right now. He's still running this show. Everyone who, who knew David, everyone in this room has a story about him. He had some wonderful gifts not least his capacity to deal with adversity, to remain outgoing and personable, to draw people to him. It's hard to believe he is gone, that the phone won't ring again with David on the line. My name is Dan Taylor, I knew Dave through the church here. I had six messages on my voicemail yesterday from Dave reminding me to be here today. <laughs> and that was just my home phone. There were three more on my cell phone. And then there was one message from Frank Loda passing on a message from Dave that I was supposed to be here today. Or at least I imagine it that way. 
And I'm sure it would be if there was a phone connection to heaven. I'd come home from school and my family would ask, did you talk to Dave? He left three messages today. I needed a special answering machine just to hold Dave's messages. And yes, his incessant calls at times might be a little irksome, but you know, I'm going to miss him. Who's going to call now and tell me when there's a fire somewhere in Waltham or a police action? Or call to tell me about some important story on cable access? Who's going to tell me I should vote for Jeanette for mayor, or Hillary for president? Who's going to ask about Chris's next baseball game and can I take him to it? Dave was one of those people who just liked people. He was friendly with, and, and with everybody he met and made friends everywhere. And he was so proud of his friends on the police force and the fire department or in the corner office at City Hall. He worked to raise money for the community day center or Joni's friends. He just liked people. And in this day and age, well, in fact, in any day and age, we need more people like that. And we all should learn and embrace uh, a little of David's wonderful innocence and just love of all the people around him. Uh, I'll finish up with a few jokes in Dave's honor. Dave would participate in talent shows either here or at at uh, uh, our church retreat at Ferry Beach, or maybe at his own birthday parties, he would always have the like to get up there and ham it up a little bit. So, in his honor, why did the duck cross the road? The chicken had a day off. <laughs> why did the dog cross the road? To get out of the barking lot. <laughs> hey, Dan, my socks got really holy. Now I can only wear them to church. <laughs> Why did the balloon go near the needle? He wanted to be a pop star. <laughs> Which country's capital is, is growing fastest? Ireland, because every year it's Dublin. <laughs> so, <clears throat> I will miss Dave. Uh, I, would take, I was one of the people who would take him to get his checks cashed um, on, uh, usually my night was Wednesday night, and uh, one of the things we would do is always, he would always uh, buy a lottery ticket, and uh, we'd, we'd scratch off the uh, a, uh, instant uh, ticket, so I, I brought one here. One time, by the way, he won 20 bucks. <laughs> so he's a lucky guy. Wow. Mm. Mm. I don't think that wins anything. Mm. No. No. This is pretty much what we did. <laughs> no. No. One more time, Dave. Here it is. Oh well. <laughs> but it was a fun ritual nonetheless and and I will miss it. So here's to you, Dave.
now is the time for you to share some of what it has meant to you to experience Dave's friendship, his presence, his resilience or encouragement in your own lives. You may wish to share a memory or say something about how your life was enriched by Dave. If there is some silence, that's okay too, but somehow I hardly doubt it. Please try to be mindful of the time so that we have time to hear from everyone who wishes to speak. Please signal me and I will bring the microphone to you. Please tell us who you are and speak loudly so all may hear. As most of you know, I know Dave for helping him out at Dunkin' Donuts, giving him a mocha coffee and a treat. Being with him and to love him. I always love his, his helping with the police and making life we are today. He, he also loved going out to George's for a cigarette. remember David, especially for uh, early 2015 during the huge, huge snowstorm we had, he, uh, he called me up the night before and said, uh, hey, can you videotape my birthday party? <laughs> and uh, naturally I couldn't make it and he was quite disappointed. And just, I don't know, hell or high water, he got things done. Thank you, Jacob. I'm Joyce Wilborn, a member of this church. Um, I knew David a very long time uh, and enjoyed his humor and seriousness. Uh, whenever we got an update about David and he was in the hospital or having a hard time or moving and everything, I always sent him a card from Dave, my husband and myself. And usually I'd enclose a $5 bill and just thought he'd go to McDonald's or something. So one time I saw him in church and he said, hi Joyce, thank you for the card. And I said, oh, you're very welcome. And he said, but you know, you forgot something. <laughs> and I said, oh, did I get the zip code wrong? No, he said. There wasn't any money in it. <laughs> so I said, oh, I guess probably I didn't have any fives that day. So he said, do you today? <laughs> so I said, well, I'm not sure. And I looked and I said, gee, I don't. And he said, do you have any singles? <laughs> And I said, oh, I have three. And he said, okay, that'll be all right. <laughs> and I gave it to him. It's our David. <laughs> Hi, my name's Alicia Hennessy, and I've known Dave for 34 years. We weren't dating, but we kind of went to um,
the shrine, we'd go, he asked me to go out and we would go to all the parties and stuff together. And he was such a wonderful friend. I've known him so long. I'm gonna try and be just like him because um, he was just a wonderful person. You guys, thank you for coming. Thank you. Uh, my name's Jeff Wilkins. Um, I first knew Dave when he was a member of the uh, First Baptist Church of Littleton back in the 80s. My first memories of him were when a group of us from the church did a mission project in Arizona. He must have misbehaved or something somewhere on the trip and he was serving a detention. <laughs> so uh, I don't know, I saw him sitting there by himself, so I sat with him. That's when we first bonded, you know? Um, we became good friends through the years. Uh, I helped him move a few times. I was so psyched when he finally came home to Waltham. Uh, must have taken me to about every bar in Waltham through the years. You know, met more people I'll never remember. Um, but I just love him. So uh, all of my friends uh, knew him as Houston nicknamed Houston, and apparently all of his friends and family knew me as Houston. <laughs> Never quite understood how that worked, but we all just, we, we referred to each other as Houston, I think from the, the old TV show, Matt Houston, you know, how he always used to like detective shows and whatnot, so, um, in fact, one of my friends coined the term, if, whenever you had an interaction with Dave for the first time, you were forever Houstonized, you know, <laughs> always remembered him, so, uh, Anyway, journey on, Dave. See you again soon. I'm Alice Taylor, and I'm also a member of this church. Um, and when I first met Dave, um, our kids were young, and he knew them, knew their names greeted them, and I should add that I'm also the parent of an adult with special needs who, unlike Dave, is not particularly conversational, um, being autistic and intellectually and developmentally disabled. I'm now 61, my kids are 25, 29, and 31, and they've moved up and out. Even my oldest, who recently moved into a group home about a year ago. Dave never failed to ask about my kids by name every time I saw him. And this is something that I will always be grateful for. My name is Craig Russell, and I've known Dave for 14 years, and I received a mess when they were growing the first time. I was trying to walk with them, and they were saying when they were silent. We were holding signs, and they came across the pond, and they were strong. And so I would take them out every two weeks for a ritual fashion check at George's. North Waltham to McDonald's, home visited the people, and then later we produced political, local political things. And so uh, it's been a long time. And um, so it's a short memory that we can make for all of us. Thank you. My name is Jeanette McCarthy. I knew Dave before I was mayor. But he loved everyone. He was an itch, but he was a good itch. <laughs> he 
really loved everyone, but he, the best role that he loved was to be the Sergeant of Arms for the Waltham City Council. I'm going to say this to you, Dave, the Sergeant at Arms is rest. We love you. See you soon. Yeah, my name is Ken McCluskey, a uh, retired Waltham cop. I was on the police department for many years. Uh, I met Dave at the police station prior to my first ever shift, which time he handed me a, a, a shiny silver police whistle and wished me good luck. <laughs> that just shows how generous Dave was. I don't know if all of you know his great generosity. He would give you the shirt off his Dave and I became friends after that for many years, and uh, he was a, a unique guy and the most genuine guy I've ever met. And, uh, um, I'm Tina Walker Morin from Chaplains on the Way. Dave allowed us to be a part of his community. And he called each of us Pastor so-and-so. So I was Pastor Tina, and there was Pastor Court, who I think was his, probably his favorite among us, behind Pastor Joan, of course. Pastor Joan, Joan had the highest, because she was the first that he met. But we get to go visit him at dialysis. And when I got to go, I thought, oh, you know, he's sitting there for four hours, probably all by himself. He wants to talk to someone. I get there, and they have to kick whoever else is visiting with them out so I can go in. <laughs> he was never alone. He was always with someone. And then Becky and I got to visit him at Christmas Eve this past year at the nursing home. And we get there looking for him. He's not in his room. So we go down the hall looking, where's Dave? He's, of course, in the dining area. And we come in, and he goes, oh, Pastor Becky, Pastor Tina, come over. And he starts to introduce us to the people he's sitting with. Oh, this is Betty. She used to be a school teacher, blah, 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 blah. Tells us her whole life story. This is Sally. She's got nine children and blah, blah. He'd only probably been there like a day and a half, and he already knew everybody's <laughs> stories. But that was, of course, Dave, and we'll definitely miss his voicemails, too. Hi, my name is Bob Marshall. I'm retired from the uh, Waltham Fire Department. Uh, I met Dave over the years when he lived on Lake Street. We'd go to Medicals at his place, Trapello Road. Uh, he was a real good friend. A lot was learned from him, and he had a big impact on the fire and police. And uh, I'm going to miss him. I thought I was the only one that had his phone number. But, uh, <laughs> and, and the one thing I couldn't get him to do was pull the hook for Republican. I don't know. He was pretty strong in what he does. But, See you again sometime, Dave. Uh, hi, I'm Nancy Amstutz. I used to go to Dave's birthday parties and would sit with him in dialysis sometimes. And uh, I just feel he was such an inspiration to us all that uh, he gave, he didn't have much, but he gave himself. And uh, I will miss him. I'm Sue Genser. I'm a relatively recent member of this congregation, 2010, 2011. And um, Dave was one of the people who made me feel really welcome because I was one of the people that he would go, who's that? I don't know her. And five minutes later, he'd be talking to me. So it was really nice. And I will miss him. I'm Jane Jacobs. I'm a longtime family friend. Um, probably known David close to 50 years, guys. Yeah. And David never forgot a thing, as you all know. Do you remember Mary Jane when? And it would be a story about how we went biking and the, and the green flies bit him. And, oh, yeah, Dave, maybe. But one of his favorites was when we had a place on the lake and 
he, my late husband said he would teach him how to cast. So David takes my husband's best rod and reel <laughs> and casts out into the lake the entire rod and reel. <laughs> I have never seen my husband move that fast into the water. He retrieved it brought it back up on the dock, and Dave said, can I try again? <laughs> uh, it was really nice knowing David. I just remembered a little story from when he was maybe my 14th or 15th birthday, and as many, many of us probably my dad, and um, I remember he's like, oh, Amelia, I got, you, I got you something for your birthday. And he pulled out, um, I think it was probably from, you know, like Party City or one of those Halloween stores. It was a, um, um, a f one of those fake million dollar bills. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, it, I was, it was only slightly amusing at the time, but I just remembered that I did keep that fake little million dollar bill, and I've never gotten rid of it since then. And, I'll definitely miss the lunches with David. I'm David's cousin Harry, and I'm speaking because I don't want to answer for not speaking. <laughs> <laughs> you happen to call David's home phone and you got the office of Dave, that's because he was my CEO and he was my yes man. And, uh, I was very fortunate to have a relationship with my cousin Dave. Uh, you know, it wasn't always that way. We grew up together, but then eventually we got separated. And later on in my heyday, I bumped into him again, and we started hanging out. And uh, I, I have to apologize. It wasn't in a lot of holy places doing holy things. <laughs> Dave had a wild side to him that he loved to entertain, and I helped him entertain it. And, uh, but in any event, uh, over the years, you know, uh, we, we grew, and I was very fortunate that I got to enjoy Dave. And, uh, he, you know, I could bring, I brought him to a lot of functions. All, all of my friends know him as the mayor of all him. I apologize, Jack. <laughs> but they always ask me constantly, how's the mayor doing? How's the mayor doing? I could bring him to functions, and when we left, he would know more about people, and he would know more people than I knew at functions. And, uh, one thing about Dave, he had a knack for bringing out the festive people, whether they wanted it to come out or not. And, uh, you know, I, he did it in me. He constantly did it in me. I keep telling him, no, I'm not doing that. And before I knew it, I was doing it. He <laughs> <laughs> could do it. You know, I, I love that guy to death. He was sweet. He was innocent. You know, there was, you know, uh, I don't know, he was just genuine. And, and when David, when, when, you, when you got David, that's what you got. You got David. And, uh, you know, I kind of look at it like every day is his birthday now, you know, and uh, I'm really going to miss him. Couple of short stories that can just affirm everything that everyone has said. But so, as you know, Dave was in and out of the hospital, and sometimes at Newton Wellesley, and sometimes at Mount Auburn, and maybe others. But um, <laughs> what I remember, he would always call me, and I would sometimes able to visit him, um, often not. But he would, by the time I would have one or two conversations with him, and while he was in the hospital, he would already know all the chaplains in the hospital, <laughs> and he would say. <laughs> Pastor Joan, do you know Pastor this one, Pastor that one? Sometimes I did, actually, which was kind of fun. Um, but just another example of how Dave just, in a place, just got to meet all the people. And, and one other thing about that was that they, all these chaplains would give him care notes and Bibles, and he was very pleased to present me with these when he came home. <laughs> um, uh, one, another memory is he loved house blessings. When he first moved into his place near the day center, um, I asked him if he wanted a house blessing, and he was thrilled. I, I didn't know. I, you know. I just thought I would offer, and he said, oh, yes, this would be great. So we did that, and, but, and of course, then he, wanted to, he had a lot of people he invited to this house blessing, so it turned into quite a party. And then when he moved from the uh, one uh, apartment to the, another one, we did another house blessing, and I'm quite sure Becky did a 
house blessing at uh, St. Mary's when he moved in there. So, and then the last thing is just that, um, so, and I'm Joan Murray, I'm retired from Chaplains on the Way. So, and we uh, used to have a Wednesday afternoon service at the First Presbyterian Church, and Dave would come sometimes, but then he learned that Matt Carricker, who's this wonderful man who's back in the row, he was gonna come bring his guitar and sing. And Dave got very excited about this. And I didn't know Dave was a singer. I don't know how I missed that, but he would come to these services and he would, he knew all the hymns and he would direct that into what to, what to sing. And so I started calling that particular, you know, when Matt was there and we had our Wednesday service, I called it the Dave Sanderson sing-along. <laughs> and um, he brought a lot of joy to us and I'm going to miss him. Last call. So I was honored several years ago when Dave met with Reverend Joan and I to plan his memorial service. I, you never really want to, it's an awkward moment, but I, it was an honor to do it. And uh, uh, he checked back with me a few months ago to make sure everything was in order and everything was in place. What I didn't know was that David was making memorial plans with many people. <laughs> So over the past few days, I've had people calling me saying, so where is, where am I gonna sing this song? Where I have this, um, and here we are. So uh, not in the program are Katie Gulati and Scott Tugas, who um, David loved and loved to listen to them sing, and they are singing, right? Um, the Wind Beneath My Wings. Oh, okay. Thank you. 
We will now hear um, a few words from Marilyn um, Sanderson, David's sister-in-law. I'd really like to just stand here because I can talk loud enough to you all. <laughs> just take a few minutes here. Um, that was simply beautiful. Simply beautiful. Uh, I think I did. Uh, no, I'm not. I did. Oh, that's not the way. My friends wouldn't say that. But. <laughs> Anyways, my first uh, time I met David, he, I was 19. And um, we went, he, at that time, he was at Deborah in Pennsylvania because at that time the, the city of Waltham didn't have facilities for children. He was nine, I believe, at the time um, to take care of children like David. You know, they didn't mainstream him at that time. So the state or uh, the city of Waltham paid for him to go to Deborah for several years. And um, his parents would travel there every four, four weeks, every six weeks. Um, to go visit David and spend some time. And it happened that just recently, in May, we went by it because um, we were in that area and it looks exactly the same as it did back in 1969. Um, but that was my first experience with David. And we didn't get to, oh, I didn't get to see him very often at that time because he was at school. And when we married 18 months later, Jim and I, um, he came back and he was a, uh, Jim's best man. And he was so proud of that very moment. From that point on, David came back when the state stopped paying for the school outside of the state schooling. And he went to multiple schools. And he finally ended up, after many times, uh, at Grottenwood. At Grottenwood, uh, I guess it was a living educational location. It was a live-in house anyways. And um, he stayed there many, many years. He was very familiar with Grottenwood because he had gone with his father who belonged to the Baptist Church now, and of course Grottenwood was part of the Baptist Church at that time. Uh, I mean, they may still be, but uh, whatever. Um, and he, he enjoyed going to Grottenwood, so he was right at home there. And he, at the, well, he was there and when he turned 40, he called Skip and I up one day and said, I'm leaving. <laughs> and I said, yeah, right, David. You just can't walk out of Broadway. And where are you going to go? He goes, I am 40, and I can live on my own. I am going to do this. So we got him a counselor, and it ended up that he ended up in some of them. And that didn't really work out. That was like a year, year and a half. And he said, no, I want to go to Waltham. I want to go back to Waltham. That was his whole thing. So he ended up back in Waltham. And probably in the period of the last 15 years, we probably moved him 20 times now, maybe. Because um, he lived all over the city. And, um, you know, he, like Dimitri said, the ability of numbers was just absolutely amazing. On Wednesday evening, I went to his apartment hoping to find a book or an address book or something with all these numbers. Houston was one example of it. I didn't know how to get a hold because I personally wanted to call several people um, about his death. And um, there was nothing, nothing at all. I mean, there might have been a few pieces of paper that the, the because you all know he couldn't see very well, written the letters were this big, but they had like Kathy, or they might have been Susie, or they might have been someone that, no last names, they could have been the nurses that came in to visit him. I mean, honestly, I had no clue who they were. So, um, I know I don't even remember what I was doing with the story, but whatever. We didn't find the book. We didn't find the telephone number. So, my main reason for speaking today was to thank all of you because the city of Waltham, Mayor McCarthy, the city council, the fire department, the police department, this congregation, the multiple congregations that he went to prior to coming and finding this his home. Um, people all over the city have been absolutely positively wonderful. Um, 
as you realize, we are a very small family. And um, because we live away from Waltham, even though Jim was brought up in Waltham, um, it was very difficult many a times to come to a lot of the things that David would have liked us to attend, besides birthday parties. So um, I just wanted to thank each and every one of you, just by the stories we heard yesterday and all the stories today. Um, we know that he was loved. We always knew he was loved here as well as in our family. And we tried to make his life as comfortable as he could be. I mean, when you talk about calling, he'd call us four to five times a day too, and he'd call in his phone, his cell phone, my cell phone, Joy's cell phone, Jeff, Jeff's cell phone. And then he would even call our friends out in Arizona on a weekend to see why we weren't answering the phone. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, he, there was no limits to David, and unless you put perimeters around well, how often you wanted him to call you, he would uh, call you. Right, Chuck? Right. <laughs> so um, I truly approve, we as a family, Joy, Jeff, Tony, Skip, myself, and Miss Ira, thank you all for all the help that you gave of leaves. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. And now I invite you into the spirit of prayer. Gracious and loving God, source of all life and of death also, we give you thanks for the life of our brother and good friend, David Sanderson. We give you thanks for the enormity of his spirit, for his perseverance and desire for connection which called us into relationship with him and often with each other. We give thanks for that persistence which grew in us, the ability to love and to be loved. O oh, Holy Spirit of life, we do not in this moment seek to understand the meaning of life and of death. That is for you alone. But we do seek your presence and your persistent love and the love of Dave's community, his family, and his friends as we enter this time of sadness, where we miss his voice and we miss his smile and we miss his unique way of being a time when we just miss Dave. May his spirit rest in peace, and may we too find peace with our memories and our feelings of loss. May we be filled with thanksgiving for the many ways he enriched us. Draw us close now to the values of our lives while we are still here taking breath. We pray and have faith that the blessed ties of this life are not lost, but endure into and beyond death. Now let us pause to meditate, to pray, and to remember the person Dave Sanderson was to us as individuals and to our whole community. In silence, we enter a time of personal reflection. Now we will sing hymn 123, which is in your order of service, but I invite you to stay seated while we do this.
so now, friends, we have come to that sacred time when we part from the physical presence of David, who we loved and will miss. With reverent hearts, we commit David to the eternal creator of life from which we all come and from which we will all return. But even as we say goodbye to Dave in this light, we greet him again and again in our minds and our hearts with lasting joy and affection. Reminded of life's transience, may we be inspired to use each day wisely, to live with care, and in the spirit that Dave did. Thus, may we make the memory of Dave Sanderson a source of true blessing. Amen. Excuse me, before we start to do the benediction, whatever, I just want to recognize one person, and that is Joe Castellano from the Edinburgh Center. Joe, will you stand, please? Joe has been David's counselor for 21 years. He has been with David daily, or we have to talk about talking daily. He talked to him daily. He took care of all his care, all his doctors, all his um, grocery shopping, all his clothes, all the places he needed to be, and he has been his best friend for 21 years. And even though we've all been friends of David, this gentleman has gone on and above the duty for the Edinburgh Center um, to take care of David and every mention of the word. Okay, Thank you. And I just wanted to make sure Joe was Thank you. And may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with kindness and bring you deep abiding peace. And as we go forth from this place, let us hold Dave in our hearts, celebrating his life and his love for connecting us one to the other. Amen. This concludes our service this morning. The family, David's family, welcomes everyone to join in our, our reception in the parish hall, uh, just following the uh, postlude. And our postlude will be, oh, we, we're going to do, oh, yep. Yeah. Once again, on behalf of David's entire family, I take this opportunity to thank you all for joining in this funeral service and celebration of his life this morning, for all of the love and support that you've shared with them throughout this difficult time. And as Reverend said, you're all welcome to join the family in the parish hall immediately following the services. David's burial is scheduled privately for the family at a later date. Thank you. Uh, an another uh, surprise that I received this week was Scott calling me and uh, telling me that David had hoped that he and Katie uh, would sing our post loop.
you gotta 